Uh, you probably expected it, but what did that do for yeah, the Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good to have Avery back and see him back out there. I think it was, um, you know, it's good to, good that, that he can play just from a, a player standpoint, but I think in a lot of ways it was good. To be, it was a little bit of an emotional lift for our players to see him back and see him out there competing and participating. So it was good. It was good to see him move around. He looked fine. Told me he felt great and, and uh, looking forward to, to him having a good week of practice. Where is he at in terms of possibly playing this week? Um, you know, we're going to continue to progress him. I mean, he's full contact right now, and uh, we'll just continue to, to progress him, and I would expect him to play. The secondary seem to have a – they seem to get picked up a little bit by it too. They, they yeah, up yeah. I thought it was good. I thought Logan had the best practice he's had. Uh, I thought he looked like he was starting to see things and react faster, and, and showed up more today than I think he has at any point during camp, uh, which was good to see him. You know, I feel solid. Uh, I mean, I feel like Cam has been solid, and, and McClure has been solid, and um, you know, I, I feel pretty good. I mean, I think the secondary's uh, starting to, to see things, starting to gel a little bit more as a unit, and I'm excited to, to watch those guys. What do you think of Jefferson? You know, Jefferson, I think is going to be a, you know, going to be a good player for us. I mean, he's a guy that, um, you know, has kind of been our bell cow in a lot of different ways. I mean, he's been really consistent and, and been a solid player for us. So he's, you know, he's one of those one of those guys that probably doesn't get as much attention as he deserves. Coleman hasn't missed anything all fall and didn't dress today. Yeah, yeah, he should be back tomorrow. He had a little bump on his knee, so he's, uh, I mean, he's going to be fine. I would expect him to practice full tomorrow. Forbes, uh, still waiting to see. You know, still kind of day to day. Feels good some days, doesn't feel very good other days. You know, I would expect him probably not to play. Quite frankly, uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out, but um, I, I would say he's going to be more than likely doubtful. And same with Scarlett at this point. Or? Yeah, uh, Scarlett, we'll see. I would say. Uh, I would say Scarlett will have a better chance at Forbes probably. He hasn't been cleared still though, right? No, still hasn't been cleared. No. Is that tomorrow or Wednesday? Yeah, well, I don't know when his doctor's appointment is this week. I know he's, I think he's supposed to see a doctor this week and we'll see where he's we are. He's had no contact at all yet, right? He hadn't had any contact. No, he's he always had limited, you know, very limited stuff. Very limited. Um, hasn't done much with his hand, you know, at all. So we'll see. Does he need to be cleared to even club it up and play? Yeah. Yeah, we got to get him cleared. I mean, it's the same old deal. We want him to get healthy. I mean, he could go out there and and, and play with the club and and you know risk risk further injury and, and be ineffective. Or we can try to get him healthy. I didn't think Campo did today in, in his stead. You know, good, good. I think I think those guys have been good. I mean, I think Cragen's been been really solid. Camparelli's really shown up a bunch. Puka's starting to play to show up more and more. Uh, you know, McCain's been pretty solid and, and you know shows flashes. So I've been I've been pleased with that group of defensive ends. Oh, you guys get through academically through summer? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have uh, everybody's through, eligible, ready to go. We had a great summer academically and and uh, kind of picked up where we left off after the spring semester. How do you think Whitehurst is is, is recovering from that panned finger thing? Good. I think yeah. I think I think he's done well. I mean, I I think. Um, you know, he had a little bit of the case of the drops, and I think he caught the ball better today, and, and I think feels a lot better now that he's, you know, gotten over that. And um, you know, I think Maurice Harris is kind of in the same boat. I mean, Maurice did some good things today. It was good to see him, you know, back full speed. Um, I would expect him to to be a big part of what we're trying to do. Is he going to kind of stay on that other because he switched him to, to Z from the X? Yeah, we can. I mean, those those two positions are interchangeable. Uh, I mean, those guys can can play either side. Getting back to Forbes, if he doesn't play this week, is it possible you'd sit him for another couple of weeks since you have a bye and try to get him healthy for? I don't know. We'll see. You know, that's 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 the deal. I mean, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. I think I think right now. Um, I mean, maybe you don't need him as much in game two. Yeah, I don't know. I would. I would. <laughs> I mean, we're going to try to play everybody and get everybody. Sure. Get everybody ready and and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just he's day to day, and so we'll just kind of worry about it. You know, and if he feels really good Saturday, then we'll give him a shot. But but. I would say probably right now, you know, I wouldn't anticipate him playing. Is your tempo on offense getting to where you want it to be? And um, yeah, I mean, we show we show signs of getting there, or, or at times. I mean, I thought in scrimmage number two we were certainly there, and and um, you know, right now when we're practicing, we're we're changing personnel quite a bit. So you know, the tempo probably isn't doesn't look as good maybe as it has been, but but I think that our guys understand how important it is, and when they get get rolling, I think that. Um, you know they can get it get it going pretty. When you're at your best last season at La Tech. How how much time between plays typically? Uh, rolling? You know, depended. Um, probably probably you know 12, 12, 13, 14 seconds. I mean that's mm -hmm. pretty fast when you're going 
when you're going down there. And, you know, the funny thing is time between plays is, is in the eye of the beholder a little bit. It's like 40-yard dashes. Whoever, you know, 40-yard dashes are relative to who's, who's timing them. You know, if I'm if I'm timing me, I'm gonna I'm gonna run four or five. And <laughs> if you Jeff, if you're timing me, I'm gonna run five too. You know, and so that's a little bit that way when it comes that to fast. Time. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe five four. Uh, but that's that's the way. You know, that's the way that stuff is. I mean, a lot of that depends on you know who's who's got the stopwatch. What's the most plays you guys ran in a game last year? Do you remember? You know, I don't. I think we had a couple where we were over 100 plays. Did you? Yeah. Wow. I think A and M was 100, 102. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, do you remember, did we have a games at Louisiana Tech last year where we had a couple of games we had over 100 plays, didn't we? I would have to go back. Yeah, I think we had, I think I would say we had two, three, maybe four. Uh, I know at Texas Tech one year we had like 116. With, with all the variables and all the new stuff and all the unknown, is it hard to be patient about this thing coming together? I mean, you want... You yeah, want I mean, to come out of the shoot quickly here. Yeah, we need to. Uh, I mean, the thing we got to do is have a good week of practice. I mean, that's, you know, um, it's like I told the players tonight. It's a good thing we didn't play tonight. We wouldn't, have, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a great practice tonight. I mean, it was fine, but it wasn't where we need to practice to, to get where we want to go. And so, um, you know, we need to have three, three good days this the rest of the week and, and get all the kinks worked out, and, and then, um, you know, and then go play Saturday. And it's like I told the players today. You know, we don't need to do anything incredible. Just go out and play. You know, just go out and play and, and make routine plays. And the team that does that the most and doesn't beat themselves usually wins. And so that'll be it'll be our challenge. We've got a lot of moving parts though, with guys in new positions, yeah. a lot of young guys. Yeah, we're young. Yeah, uh, we're young. new schemes, injuries, all that stuff. Yeah, everybody's got problems. I mean, yeah. You know, that's the same old deal. Every, I mean, there's plenty of problems to go around everywhere. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't anticipate us. Um, you know, having the kind of growing pains maybe that some people think we will, but we'll see. You still want to come out fast. Yeah, yeah, we want to come out and, and play as fast as possible and execute and, you know, play at a high level. And, and uh, you know, our expectations are to go play well on Saturday and try to win a football game. Do you anticipate having to holster any elements of, of what you'd like to do or is or you have the full complement? No, we're going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at him, try to win a football game. And we'll do that every time we play. I mean, regardless of the opponent, uh, no matter you know what the situation is, no matter if we're down 49 at 49, I mean, we're going to keep going like we're like the, like it's you know like the score is tied. So that's just kind of the, the way we do things. Now that you're looking at tape of Northwestern, what jumps out at you about them? Well, I mean, they're just, they're incredibly solid. They just, you know, they don't make mistakes, don't beat themselves. Um, you know, they have some dynamic playmakers on offense, some guys, the quarterback and the running back are, are pretty special guys. Um, you know, number 40 is kind of a fullback guy that makes a ton of plays for him in critical situations. And, you know, defensively, they're just in the right spot all the time. You know, they're, it's, it's uh, about the biggest compliment you can give a defense is that, you know, everybody plays in sync together, and those guys play in sync. Um, you know, they, they, they know what they're supposed to do. They play good fundamental football, and, and uh, you know, they, they uh, tackle well, and, you know, just a good, solid, fundamental defense. It seems like they've sort of matured as a program to the point where they have a lot of depth as well. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, I think they do. I think that's, that's you know, what they've done is they built it the right way. They built it smart. Um, you know, they've got a, an older team, which shows that they've recruited the right kind of players and guys that fit fit Northwestern and have come up through the program and, you know, learn how to win and learn what their program's all about. And then what, what happens is you get to the point where the older guys teach that to the younger guys and then the program, you know, starts to sustain itself. And that's the idea. That's what you want in a program is, is you want to, you know, you want to have that consistency and, and those guys are there. Very good. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Sonny. Thank you.